Hello, my friend. David Burns here with you today, two days after Christmas. How are you? Hope you had a Merry Christmas today. I've got all my hives. I've got about 20 hives here in the YouTube studio yard. And what I'm going to be doing today is a lot of work. I've got to cut some bottom board panels so I can slide those in there and shut off the bottom board uh, screened area. Um, I want to do that for treatment and just to help them in the winter, I think. I leave some of them open, but in order to treat, which I'm going to do next, is I'm going to treat some OA vaporization. And it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. And it's warm enough to let the vapor kind of circulate through the hives. They're moving a little bit in there, so that'll help a lot. We're going to do that with our insulation panels on. Hopefully that'll fit in there okay. Um, also, I'm going to show you something about some skunks trying to get some bees in the winter time and what you can do about that. Stay tuned for that. And I've checked all my uh, jars. I had to refill a lot of them. They've already eaten through uh, my jars in about a day or two. I got one more day and then the winter weather comes back and it's going to be really cold. So I'm going to be taking jars off probably on Monday. Today is Saturday. So tomorrow it's going to be about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. And so I'm going to be able to feed them one more day. And then I'm taking the jars off on Monday. Tomorrow is going to be rainy. I'm not going to come out here tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to be putting my winter bee kinds on. Woo, I'm excited about it. Going to put all my winter bee kind boards on probably Monday or Tuesday. I'll make a video and show you guys that. But right now, these highs behind me, the six behind me, the six over there, the four or five over there, however many that is, I'm going to just OA vaporize them. I'm going to show you how I do it on a few of them. Not going to show you all of them. But why this works in the winter is because theoretically, there are less, there's less brood in the hive in the wintertime. And so the mites are going to be probably running around. They're going to be foundress mites, adult mites, and we can have a better kill of mites in the wintertime. So I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'll do it, you know, every five days. I'm going to at least do it this one time, but we'll see what the weather holds. I don't want to do it when it's really cold and they're clustered. Because I don't feel like the vapors are going to really do a good job if they're clustered in a tight cluster. So they're spread out a little bit. The vapor will do their job. Let me get to work for you. So I need to take some of the golf tees out so that I can start putting the vaporization in. I just use these to plug the holes. Plastic. All right, got that one done. I'm watching our temperature, make sure it's good. Putting a new insert plunger in. There we go. And this particular piece got a little bit too low. So I'm going to just trim it a little bit here so I can vaporize this hive. All right. There's my plug. All right, will that fit? I might be able to raise it up a little bit. There we go.
Now, I was getting ready to slide in the bottom board um, piece after I removed this robber screen. And a few days ago, I showed a video. Some of you asked, can bees inside the hive actually carry dead bees up and out uh, through a robber screen? And I showed a video, as you can see here. This was from three days ago. You can see that they carried out all these dead bees, laid them out uh, in front of the hive here. Well, today I came back, this would have been three days ago, and look at this. I see this. Now, if you look at it, you might say it is some kind of animal dropping. It does look like animal dropping, or does it? Actually, we have a lot of skunks around our property. And as you can see here, this is not scat. Scat is skunk poop. And the reason I know this is not scat is because there's too many recognizable body parts of the honeybee. Now, this is largely debated among even skunk experts. Some people say, how can a skunk eating bees, how does their digestive system work so fast that while they're eating bees, they poop bees out? And that's a good point. Others say, well, they come back and eat again, and then they, they're pooping. But this is clearly um, chewed up bee parts that they suck all the juices out of. So we would call it like a cud or something. But you can see so many bee parts in here, and it would be more digested, I believe. And it seems that each one of these little areas has some moisture around it, maybe from the juices. But that's amazing. That's skunk. Uh, this was actually on one of my master beekeeper tests one time in the lab to identify this. And it was to be identified as bees getting chewed up by skunks and then spit back out. Yeah, I smelled it and it does not smell like skunk poop. And uh, I did not taste it. <laughs> and so I will save some in case one of you uh, want to do a uh, taste test on it, but you can see all the bee parts there. It has not been digested. So now what we're going to do is remove the robber screen and we're going to slide in a piece to seal off the screen bottom board. All right, let's get this robber screen off. Try to make, not to make too much noise. The temperature right now is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So the bees are kind of partially clustered, maybe not heavily clustered. Now, when I remove this, they can fly out in a rush. I expect to find more dead bees on the screen on the bottom here. Yep, there are more. And I found a stick laying nearby. I know they sell the, well, we actually sell the little blue plastic things that you can stick in here and scrape out dead bees. But you can see these, this is normal die off in the, in the winter time. And so even though that the bees can, you know, take out bees through a robber screen, they do not do it as efficiently as if this wasn't on here. But they did move them to the front. I'm trying to scoop them off from the back and there's not many toward the back. They're all toward the front here. So what I've done, I've uh, I built this originally with a gap here in the middle, as you can see, but I thought it was going to be too big for uh, a mouse to go in. So I put a mouse guard on the back side of it so they can still, you know, remove some dead bees and all uh, through it, but keep the mice out. Let's push it in. I'm going to push to one side because I got to put a little block of wood over here. I originally put it in the middle like this, but I'm just gonna put it here so I can block that off because a mouse could definitely go in there. All right, we'll put that about right there somewhere. There we go. Now they've already started to use their entrance. 
and they're pulling a dead bee out the entrance. <laughs> oh, took the bee away. Sherry and I took time out of our schedule to make a video showing you guys how we mix up the winter bee kind ingredients to put the winter bee kind boards on a hive in the winter time. So some of you may be wondering what the recipe is or wondering, you know, uh, how to make them if you're going to refill them. Watch this video right over here. I'll see you guys over there.